Hello people, it's me, Ginny Metherill. Welcome to my channel. I'm a fourth generation witch who practices the old ways or traditional witchcraft in the beautiful countryside of Devon, taught to me by my mother, my siblings, my coven, my friends, and varying other peoples I'm always learning. Today's video is all about the psychic health and psychic recuperation. It is the third part of our body and you know, who knew that we have three parts, our mental, our physical and our psychic. Now we've had a particularly bad last 10 months or so with a lot of sadness and upset, grief and general distress and this, no matter how much we try and keep our equanimity does affect us. Now there's plenty of videos out there and I really think you should go and watch some of them because they're much better than what I can talk about, uh, showing you how to be mentally very healthy and physically very healthy. But what I am talking about is our psychic health. And psychic health is not our mental health and it's not our physical health. Psychic health is the health of our energy. It is the health of our power and ability to manifest and create. This psychic health is completely and utterly intertwined with our mental and physical health. Your mental health is of course your mental well-being, whether you can face the terrible things that happen to people in life with equanimity. To keep calm and rational as much as you can, 95% of the time. There's always that 5% when people are going to go schizoid off. I certainly do. And I need that to, you know, offload some stress that I'm carrying. And I like to get rid of that sort of excess energy through a little, I don't mean to, but through a little, maybe a bit of a shout here and there at my husband or kick the fridge or some such thing. So the first question, I suppose, is what is your psychic self? Now, this is not just your ability to read cards or see the future or talk with spirits. It is completely and utterly tied up, of course, with your body and your mind. The Christians would call it your soul. It's a bit more than that, but soul is as good a word as any that I could use. Psychic self is, is the ability to you know, understand emotions from people as they walk into a room, to pick up on the little things that people don't tell us, to really understand when somebody needs just a plain hug which is lots of people who can't do that. That's your psychic self. It's not your mental, it's not your physical, it's your psychic self telling you these things. But in times of great difficulty and stress, your psychic self can get knocked out. In fact, it's not just in times of great difficulty and stress, your psychic self can get knocked out of kilter in just by living a life. Now, of course, we know about the psychic self in our language. You have all these phrases, you know, I feel out of kilter, I'm knocked out of sync, I'm all shook up. These all really refer to our psychic self and this is what I want to concentrate on today. Now, this video is a little bit difficult. This is not easy magic because you have to really trust in yourself, but it is so important. It's as important as making sure that you feed your body vegetables and carbohydrates and vitamins and minerals, or that you take time out to prepare your mind and mentally strengthen yourself. I need you to give yourself some psychic recuperation. So your psychic self is to keep your aura in tip top condition, Make sure your third eye is not clouded and to keep your psychic self in harmony and in sync with your body and your mind. Now, it's different strokes for different folks when it comes to your psychic self and I have spent a lot of time talking with a variety of people about how to do a video for everybody that if everyone did these steps they would get their psychic health back into, you know, a good place. Of course, there are many different things and you might have your own ideas about this and about how you would like to do things. For example, you might be a great meditator. It might be something that you really, really just like to sit with your crystals. I don't know because I'm not you. However, the steps I'm now going to show you will help you regardless of your um, requirements, they will help you to get your psychic health back 
on track. Step number one is to cast a circle, and I'm casting a circle with four candles, each candle representing one of the compass points, and I put my circle casting video up in the corner for you. This is my wand. Great, isn't it? I'm going to use the wand to charge the circle. Setting my intention, I cast the circle, and thus my circle is cast. So when you've cast your circle, sit within your circle and we're going to do the first part of this spell, which is to feel your aura. We've done a bit of work on this before, but what you do is you take your hands out and you pull them in towards your body. And my aura is about here. So it's about this far away from my body at the moment. It's expanding this far outside of the body. And what I wanna do is bring that aura towards my body, bring it in, I'm going to consolidate my aura. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my hands and I'm going to physically push the aura in, just push, pat it in to my body. Now, run your hands over all the parts of your body, pushing your aura in. And you'll know when it's done because then you can take your hands out again, bring them back in. Okay, yeah, so my aura now is about this far out of my body. So I've gone from this far out to this far, and that is what I wanted. Now I've done this very quickly. The circle is there for protection and to energize your psychic self. So that is why we have cast it. Though I've done this very quickly, it might take you a bit longer. The reason why I can do it quickly is that I do it all the time. I'm always paying attention to what's going on with my psychic self because it is so much part of my life. So it might take you a bit longer than the 30 seconds that it's taken me. If you can't feel anything, don't worry. Just still, using your hands, pull that movement in towards you of your aura. And that will have the same effect because your mind, your psychic self and your body are all going to work together with your intention to pull your aura in. Now the second part of this spell is going to be looking at your chakras. Now different philosophies think there are a different amount of chakras but we're going to work with the basic seven. These are the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye and your crown chakra. And these are the seven energy points of your body. So what I want you to do now is to write down each of these chakras. You could print something like this picture off the internet, which shows your chakras. And then taking a pen, you're going to ask yourself whether each of these chakras need work. So we'll start with the sacral chakra. And you'll say to yourself, does my sacral chakra need work and if the first answer and that is what we're looking for here the very first answer that pops into your head is yes uh, then we need to mark that down on our piece of paper yes it does need work if the first answer is no and you must be very intuitive about whether your chakra needs work write that down so i've sat back down in my circle so i can now do my chakra heart chakra. Yes. What we're looking for is that I want you to say the question out loud. Does my navel chakra need work? And straight ways there should be an answer popping into your head and it will be yes or no. And just go with your utter instinct. Try and do it from pure instinct. So now you've got your list of chakras that need work. I want you to sit back down in your circle. Take your list of chakras and start with the first one. Imagine that particular area as a spinning ball of energy and it'll be spinning in a certain direction like a Catherine wheel. And I want you to imagine that that ball of energy stops and starts spinning in the opposite direction. And concentrate and concentrate and concentrate on that chakra until you are confident that in your mind you have turned the energy into the opposite direction. 
go through each of the chakras that need work and do that for each of them. So you have aligned your chakras with your aura. The final part of the spell is a potion which you're going to put into your bath. Water, when you are using it as a medium, is a great healer, cleanser and helpmate. It's a conduit as well for power and energy. So when you use bath water, it does push that energy from that bath water over every part of your body and saturates your aura, your body, your physical, your psychic and therefore your mental health with its power. So we're now going to make a psychic recuperation bath water. So we're going to make a potion that we're going to put in our bath water. Now I'm using moon water in this potion. If you haven't got enough moon water, you can make some every single night, apart from the night of the new moon. So just leave your bowl outside and ask the moon, regardless of whether you can see it or not, to bless the water. So bath water is very simple. We're going to add one tablespoon of salt. Salt is for cleansing and purity. The next ingredient is some moon water. I have got uh, a small jug of moon water here. And that will do. And finally, the third ingredient, we're going to add your favorite essential oil. Now, what can I buy a favorite essential oil? Oh, here it is. I'm using Rose Otto because I absolutely adore the scent of roses into that is a few drops. It smells absolutely divine as it heats up, the rose scent coming through. Once it's come to the boil, it's ready. And the final part of the spell is simply to add the bath water to your bath and the spell is complete. I've just joined Patreon and this is a place where subscribers can get extra information and help from me personally. If you would like to take a look at that, I'd be really grateful because it does enable me to have the time to make these videos. You know, you don't get any money from YouTube. It's, it's not a money-making scheme, really, unless you are someone like Sophia Nygaard. However, it does enable me, if I can get a few subscribers to help out, to give me the time to make these videos and teach them to you. I would love to know in the comments below what you would like to get from my Patreon page. I was thinking of something like a weekly question and answer session, live obviously for the Patreon supporters, and maybe I could do subscriber giveaways on the Patreon pages. But what would you like to see? Do let me know in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. So I'll see you in the next one.